Hello everyone, welcome back to Fix the Family. My name is Raylan Alomar and we are bringing you truth without compromise for the family. This is Resurrecting Manhood today. In this segment, we're talking about the Catholic man as the entrepreneur and investor. Now a little bit about my own background. I came from a bit of modest means and we had what some people might consider class envy going on. You know, there was us and then those rich people out there. Well, as I got into my career, into my vocation, into my profession, started dealing with some of these businessmen and found out that they, these businessmen are actually quite charitable because when someone is a business owner, they end up incurring quite a bit of risk to do what they do. They do also reap the benefits from it, but they, at the same time they do take a quite amount of risk in being business owners and the thing about these guys is that they are uh, ones that really just can't help it almost you know they'll be in business do well sell off and they'll go start another one just because it's in their blood it's, it comes natural to them and they're good at it well what I want to talk about this evening is the idea of Catholic men getting into that role of entrepreneurship and looking at it from the standpoint of instead of being greedy actually being charitable because there does take a lot of discipline a lot of order that comes naturally with Catholic men to get into that role as the entrepreneur and investor so let's go ahead and start talking about it. now there's a few ways for this actually to come about but the requirement there in all cases is obviously to know what you're doing to do what you know and um, a lot of times we'll see somebody will say well they'll just get this whim of I want to go into business and they just start something not knowing anything about it and ends up failing so there's a couple of ways that you could actually go about it what commonly happens is for somebody to have a, a day job and to do something else on the side a sideline venture what Richard Paul Evans in his book the five lessons on wealth calls winning in the margins because our society our the culture we live in teaches us and trains us to remain employees our entire careers. So we put in that hard day's work and then after it's the day's over then we go home and relax. Well while some people are there relaxing in front of the TV letting Hollywood program them, other people are getting rich. And that's not greedy, that's actually charitable and responsible to build a good strong foundation of wealth for the future of your family. So as uh, Robert Kiyosaki would say, um, rich people don't get rich on their job, they get rich in their spare time. So you see a lot of businesses that will start out in the dorm room, like you remember Dell, the story of, of that one, or actually start out on a kitchen table. And somebody will do something on the side, sideline venture, and that business will develop. And what ends up happening is they're making more money in that sideline venture than in their day job. They're able to let the day job go and go out into a full-fledged, full-time business with that, that what started out as a sideline venture. So if you have something that you're interested in, start learning about it during that spare time. Start developing something with it. Start making it make money. Now, the next way that we could do that would be if someone in the actual job that they do, they get really good at it, they move up in the organization. A lot of times they'll buy out their employer who's ready to retire or they'll go into competition with them. And there's nothing illegal or unethical about that at all whatsoever. It is the free enterprise system at work, competition, and it is healthy for the economic climate and the, the free enterprise system that we live in. So what normally will hold people back from doing this is fear. What we have to remember about that is that fear is the presence of evil. We need to get over that and a lot of times what we need is just more information. So get informed, get educated about doing that and make that step. And again, we emphasize the role of the wife here, her as the supporter to that husband to give him encouragement, to encourage him along when he doubts himself, to make him feel really great about himself and to step over his fears is huge and immeasurable makes a huge difference and it worked wonders for me in furthering along my own businesses and career now finally let's talk about the Catholic man as the investor similar to the businesses I was just talking about 
These are small businesses. I'm not talking about huge corporations that are traded out on Wall Street. When I talk about investing, I'm not talking about investing in the stock market either in Wall Street because a lot of that activity we have no control over. We are turning our money over to, to other people to handle, which puts a very huge distance between us and our money and our investment. What I want to talk about is real estate investing and not speculative real estate investing, but actually real estate rentals, rentals of uh, dwellings to tenants, to, uh, to residences, to other people. And uh, it's something you can have and build or buy. And whenever you want to see your investment, you could go drive up in the driveway of it. You know what your investment is doing and what kind of condition it's in. Again, think from the standpoint of charity. There are, are huge ways that you can help people by renting property to them. You're not taking advantage of them because they need a place to live, but they may not be able or in a position to afford or qualify to purchase a home, but they want a home for their family and they'd rather not live in an apartment. So you can rent to them and actually by the discipline that a Catholic would have, you can train that tenant to be able to buy their own home. It happens to me all the time. People will come, they are a, a, a bit loose with their finances, a bit loose with their bills, help to tighten them up, hold them to account, get them on the basis of doing that. They'll end up coming back to me saying, I'm ready to buy a house. I'll say, congratulations. That's exactly what I was hoping would happen for you and your family. But even more so, you get involved with these people's lives and quite often. One time I had a client, come, a tenant come to me and say, you know, they were on the verge of divorce. Their husband was involved in all kind of pornography and bad things. Um, I think may have in, in an adulterous situation. And, um, and I, I gave her some advice and some material to read. She was getting advice from someone who was divorced, doing, you know, following someone who's failed. You're going to get the same result. So uh, they ended up patching things up. Uh, their marriage is stronger than ever, and they ended up purchasing a home of their own. These are ways we could help people and what Catholic men are supposed to do. Beyond what we're doing for our own families, it goes out to the environment the Holy Spirit places us in. This is our sessions on uh, finances. We're wrapping it up here. We're going to move on next to the relationship of a Catholic man with his wife, um, the covenant of marriage between God, husband, and wife. Here on Resurrecting Manhood today at Fix the Family, my name is Raylan Alamon. Come back and see us. God bless you.